Dr. Clifton's office. The Vaseline Program, presenting a new prize play called Juliet Said It, by Beatrice Lewis of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, starring Jean Herschel as Dr. Christian, with Rosemary DeCamp in the role of Judy Price. War is a grim teacher, but many of its lessons are of lasting benefit. For instance, Army and Navy Medical Corps have learned to use a new technique in treating burns. Credited with truly remarkable recoveries among serious burn casualties, this treatment includes the surface application of petrolatum. Yes, petrolatum, known to millions as Vaseline Petroleum Jelly, is recognized in medical circles today as an effective first aid treatment for burns. And you can be sure there's nothing better than Vaseline Petroleum Jelly for those household burns that happen so frequently. When any member of your family gets a minor burn, here's what to do. Just spread Vaseline Petroleum Jelly on fine mesh gauze and place over the burn. Then bandage firmly, but not tightly. Of course, if the burn is deep or covers a wide area, call a doctor immediately. But always keep Vaseline Petroleum Jelly on hand. Get a 10-cent jar or convenient tube tonight. Vaseline Petroleum Jelly. And so to our prize play. The scene is the River's End Hospital, and we find Dr. Christian stepping into the room of 10-year-old Skip Tucker. Easy now, Skip. You will wave yourself out of that plaster cast. Bet I could, too. Three guesses what I got, Dr. Christian. Uh, the email letter from your brother, Mark. You saw the writing. <laughs> I saw the biggest grin you've given me in six weeks. Eight and a half. I know, because Mark's last letter came the day I ran into the tractor. Dr. Christian, how much longer do you think it's going to take? To, uh, get another letter from Mark? You know, to get back to Mom and the farm. I promised Mark I'd look after things. Mom doesn't say much, but I know the farm's going to rack and ruin. Well, I hate to disillusion you, Skip, but the other boys are getting along fine for the time being. At least, they keep away from the tractor. Dr. Christian explained how it happened. <laughs> I know, Skip. One little boy fighting the war on the farm. <laughs> You've been wounded in battle, as I can see from that collection of medals. They're for my medal book. Carol makes the award. Only I've been wondering... Do you think it's right for a nurse's aide to award a presidential citation? Mm, in the case of a sister-in-law, I think it can be allowed. <laughs> what does Mark say? Mark? Oh, I don't know. The letter's for Carol. Mrs. Mark Tucker, it says. Mom brought it in this morning. Mm, in that case, we'll have to get hold of Carol. She must be somewhere in the hospital. She's on duty on Monday. But she's not here, Dr. Christian. I asked Miss Ferguson. Carol hasn't been in for a week. Are the Marines landed in 302? What's that? Judy knows the password. The situation is well in hand. Well, Hello. come in, Judy. Uh, you want me, I suppose. No, not I, Dr. Christian. Mrs. Harrison Murdoch. Seems you gave her your solemn promise. I did? To preside at a rally this coming Friday evening in honor of Wing Commander Dmitry Aglansky. Wing Commander? Mm hmm. In the RAF. He's Russian. He's a Russian prince, Dr. Christian. He fought on three battlefields, and he was awarded the Croix de Gras. You mean the Croix de Guerre? Well, that's what I said. He cut out his picture for my scrapbook. Hmm. Former Russian prince, RAF, Croix de Guerre. Hmm, he sounds like quite a fellow. He sounds like the United Nations. Uh, I'll have to call Mrs. Murdoch back. Oh, uh, then make my excuses. With the week I have ahead of me, I won't be fit to preside anyway on Friday. Uh, Judge Kimbrough will take over. I'll do my best with Mrs. Murdoch. Uh, doctor, you haven't forgotten that call at the Nesbitt farm, have you? They're ten miles from town, and it looks like rain. Oh, we'd better get started. Oh, and, uh, Skip, we'll drop that letter off at the Carol's on the way back from the Nesbitt farm. by the sign. Road slippery when wet. Didn't make much impression on that car that passed us a few minutes ago. Judy, I think I should have a talk with Carol. 
Oh, Dr. Christian, you've been hearing gossip. Oh, it's not gossip that Carol has been neglecting to skip in the hospital. You say nothing of her duties as a nurse's aide. There are other things, too. You mean Carol's been seen out on date? Oh, she's a married woman, Judy. She has a husband overseas. Well, I wouldn't worry about her. Where will she get this letter? You'll see. What will I see? <laughs> what the serials call the light in her eyes. Well, at the moment, Judy, I could do with a light on this road. Can you make out that sign? Left turn, just ahead. It's around the bulge in the hill. <gasps> Dr. Christian, there's a car against the hill in the ditch. Well, a skid, I think. Lucky it was on this side of the road. That's the same car that passed us before, going like a P-47. There's a couple standing by. Well, you'd better have a look. I'll put up right and back. Uh, you wait here, Judy. And act like a bystander? No, it's quit raining. I'm right with you. Hello there. Anyone hurt? Dr. Christian, that looks like... Carol. Carol Tucker. Why, it's Dr. Christian. Carol, are you hurt? No casualties, unless you count the bruise on my knee where I bumped the dashboard. Hello, Judy. Oh, Mrs. Tucker, I presume. Oh, you're darlings, both of you. We were beginning to think we were here for the duration. We? Oh, uh, you haven't met uh, Miss Price and uh, Dr. Christian, Commander Iglansky. How do you do? Wing Commander Iglansky? Or is it Prince Dimitri? Oh, I see you've both heard of Commander Iglansky. Yes, uh, I'll give you both a lift to my office, Carol. You can arrange about the car from there. Your office? Oh, look, now I've told That's you... That's exactly I... what I want to do. Look for myself. Even a slight accident. My dear doctor, do I understand you wish to make an examination? Oh, no, merely a checkup. With x-rays? But it's so ridiculous. I assure you, I have no injury whatsoever. Uh, Carol, uh, do you agree Well, the to... last time I argued with Dr. Christian, I got two vaccinations instead of one. It's better to go quietly. Oh, by the way, Carol, Judy has a letter for you. Oh, yeah. For me? Oh, this is what you call extra special delivery. Thanks awfully, Judy. Oh, for Mark. Did you say something, Dr. Christian? No, Carol, I was only looking. You see, I thought there might be a light in your eyes. Now that you've seen for yourself, Dr. Christian, am I all in one piece? Mm -hmm. Lucky for you, Carol. <laughs> all except that brush burn on your knee. There's a familiar look about that scar just below it. The time I fell off Mark's bicycle. <laughs> Poor Mark. He camped on my doorstep for a week, just in case you'd need a transfusion. <laughs> How is Mark, Carol? What did you say in that letter? The usual thing. Written just before a battle. Mm. I remember the last time I saw Mark. It was just before he went overseas. He was waiting for you at the hospital, and he stopped in my office. Mind if I park here a while, Dr. Christian? Waiting for Florence Nightingale. Well, I'm glad to get a chance to talk to you, Mark. <laughs> Even if it isn't Carol's time. How's the army treating you? Oh, with due respect. Notice anything? My Mark. What's that stripe doing on your sleeve? This took me for a PFC. Oh, let me be the first. Of course, uh, a star would look better. Well, they want me to learn from the ground up. How long is your furlough? They call it seven days traveling time. Where are you traveling, Mark? Where does the war? Does uh, Carol know? No, and I don't want her to know. I want this furlough to be just like all the others. Carol is gay and childlike and as beautiful as she's always been. I'm trying to hoard up a memory. The last time you saw Carol. Mm-hmm. That's it. It's a memory of our time together. The best time we ever had. No half-thoughts that you don't dare finish. And no dance music that keeps time to fear. That memory will be my own private war aim. My own... His own private war aim. I thought you ought to know. I'm sorry, Dr. Christian. But it doesn't change anything. All you've done is to let me see what it is that I'm smashing up. I hoped you'd see something else. Like thousands of girls, you reached for marriage as a child reaches for a balloon at a circus. But it isn't a circus balloon you've got a hold of. It's a piece of the rainbow. But, Dr. Christian, you don't understand. I'm in love with Nietzsche. Nietzsche? Uh, Dmitry Iglansky. Everyone calls him that. 
He's wonderful, Dr. Christian. He calls himself a soldier of fortune. He's done everything under the sun. Even drove a taxi in Paris. Was that how he won to quite a gale? If you don't mind, Dr. Christian. Oh, all right, Carol, all right. You can go now. Uh, Judy. Yes, Doctor. Uh, you can send me Jane now. Who? Oh, you know, Ed Lansky. His Highness the Prince. <laughs> Do you have the gone? Uh, a minute ago. They're taking the bus to Mrs. Murdoch. Oh, Doctor, you're worrying again. I was thinking of a boy overseas. He doesn't know it. But he's just had a broken heart. Is it as bad as that? Carol is in love with me, Jim. In love? Well, what about Mark? Mark was the reaction after a romantic hangover. Mark was the prestige of a wedding ring and having a... Husband in uniform. Oh. Dr. Christian, what are you going to do about it? I don't know. Well, shall we go? Mm. If you turn out the waiting room lights, I'll... Say, what's this on the floor? It's a letter. Mark's letter. Must have fallen from Carol's bag. My darling Carol. Are you going to read it? If I can make out this reduced print. Fifteen minutes before each hour of D-Day. By the time you get this, the attack will be in the newspapers. I just got the Rivers End Enterprise. It tells about the accident Skip had with the tractor. Carol, honey, would you do something for me? Make a little purple heart for Skip and say I awarded it to him for the battle he's putting up at home. Well, dear love, it may be that this is it, but it's not goodbye. No more than the last time in River Cent. As Romeo says, it's good night, good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be morrow. Well, Dr. Christian, we shouldn't have... That's all right, Judy. Now may I have it? Carol, I uh, thought you were taking the bus. I missed the letter and ran back. Sweet letter, isn't it? Oh, but the quotation... Mark always gets it mixed up. Well, what's wrong with it? Well, it wasn't Romeo who made that speech. It was Juliet. Goodbye now. Uh, Carol, wait. Is there something else? Yes, there's a commission in that letter. Oh, you mean the decoration for Skip? I'll stop over in the morning. I want Skip Tucker to have that medal tonight. Carol, these are doctor's orders. Very well. If you put it that way, I'll be at the hospital tonight. <laughs> Have the Marines landed in 302? The situation is well in hand. You can come in now, Dr. Christian. Mm -hmm. By all means. Skip is ready for inspection. <laughs> is that a boy I see or a bulletin board for medals? <laughs> They're not real medals, but they look pretty good. Here's the order for the Purple Heart from Mark. Oh, uh, Carol, I almost forgot. Judy said there's a message for you in the office. Mrs. Murtaugh called. Oh, about the rally tonight. I promised to help decorate the high school auditorium. Well, uh, I've got to run. So long, Skip. Don't take any wooden medals. Carol's GI, Dr. Christian. Gosh, she forgot to hand me my medal book. It's on the bureau. Mm -hmm. Is this it? Yes. Well, let's see what you've got here. I'll show you. Here's the page for decorations for valor. There is a medal of honor, distinguished service cross, navy cross, and silver star. Next comes the Victoria Cross. That's British. And Coex Card de Gras. That's for exceptional valor. Well, you compiled a fine book here. You even got an account of each item. The Croix de Guerre, awarded by the French government. I cut out every single thing I can find in case Mark comes back with a whole bunch. Said you... Miss Price is not here, Carol. Teacher. It's my last day in Riverhead. 
I thought I would take you in the hospital. Would you like me to show you around? Oh, you look so charming in your uniform. <laughs> Especially when you take it so seriously. Oh, I'm bound to take my uniform seriously. You see, I'm a doctor's daughter. And another doctor right here on my trail. Did uh, Judy give you the message, Carol? No, I missed her. I'll have to report to Miss Ferguson. Perhaps you looked after Commander Eglansky. He came to see the hospital. Well, we're always glad to show up the hospital. Doctor, I shall come directly to the point. Why have you kept uh, Carol from uh, seeing me all this week? I think you overestimate my influence. Uh, I have been at war too long not to recognize an enemy. Why do you dislike me, Dr. Christian? It's not a question of what I dislike, except Commander Glansky. Exactly. It is a question of Carol's love for me. Why do you interfere? Because you both overlooked the fact that somewhere in the European theater of war there's a man named Mark Tucker. Mark Tucker, did you say? Oh, Carol, my dear girl, what makes you look like that? What's that you're holding? A telegram. Ferguson gave it to me. The War Department regrets Sergeant Mark Tucker is missing in action. <laughs> We'll be away from the crowd. It's not fair to the high school kids with their autograph books. Uh, even the guest of a rally is entitled to call his soul his own. Yes, but it's their high school. Once it was mine, I should be out in front ushering. You should be as far as possible from that hollabaloo. Oh, my poor darling. You've had a terrible shock. I remember this dressing room. I mean, they've got more equipment than we had. These fluorescent lights in you. Carol, please. Last time I dressed in here was for our class play. It was Romeo and Juliet. I was Juliet. Mark was Tibble. It was perfectly awful. All we got to see this next time. Carol, I beg you. <laughs> you're not being realistic. All that belongs to the past, my darling. This future is ours. Yours and mine. It's an odd thing, Nietzsche. Suddenly I see quite clearly that I belong to Mark Tucker. But Mark Tucker is dead. Oh, no. It's not true. It couldn't be true. Not when I've just found out I'm in love with him. You're in love? Oh, you darling, beautiful, idiotic little fool. Do you think I'd take a hallucination like that for an answer? Oh, my sweet. Mitya, don't. Let me go. Get away from me. Yes, Mitya, I think you'd better get away from Cal. Dr. Christian, but you want to come. The good doctor has changed his mind. What about you, Eglansky? Or whatever your name is. Are you all right, Cal? I think so. And perhaps you won't mind if I ask the commander here to show me his furlough papers. Furlough papers? My dear doctor, are you suggesting I'm that... suggesting that you don't have any furlough papers. But, Dr. Christian, the quarter girl for exceptional valor. And... On what day, Dick Lansky, did you receive the quarter girl? That I can tell you with absolute certainty. In September, 1941. 1941? You're sure about that? Absolutely. I was in North Africa at the time. Well, that makes it all the more remarkable. The Croix de Guerre has not been issued by the French government since 1940. Oh, but his wounds, Dr. Christian. What wounds, Carol? The next time you pose as a wounded hero, Eklansky, be careful not to be examined by a doctor after an accident. Oh, is that why you suspected it? That was when I began to wonder. Misha, who are you anyway? Maybe Dr. Christian can tell you that, too. He knows everything else. Uh... Too bad I cannot stay, Carol. I'd have given a lot not to miss that rally. He's getting away. Why don't you stop him? Oh, I'll leave that to the military police in the corridor. He came prepared. Thanks to Skip Tucker. Skip? You don't think that I'm a living encyclopedia. Well, how would I have known about the quarter girl if it hadn't been for Skip Tucker's metal book? Oh, Dr. Christian, I've been looking all over for you. Carol, this came for you at the hospital. Telegram. In the Red Cross. Sergeant Mark Tucker, formerly reported missing in action, is a prisoner of war in a German prison camp. He requested to appear at the Fifth Service Command to accept the Silver Star awarded to your husband for gallantry in action. Who oh, marks alive? Did you hear, Dr. Christian? Yes, and I also hear that crowd outside. 
That's all they want their hero. What shall I tell Mrs. Murdoch? That I'll take over. If they want a hero, we'll give them one. There's been a slight change in the program. Instead of an alias Commander Iglansky, we'll give them our own Sergeant Mark Tucker. The curtain descends on another Dr. Christian prize play with our star, Jean Herschel, waiting to bring you a special message. Even though Baby can't talk, he can let out a wail with a wallop when his skin is chafed and sore. So, Mother, be ready with Vaseline Petroleum Jelly to relieve that touchy young skin. After Baby's bath, smooth Vaseline Petroleum Jelly on the irritated places. Massage it into the folds of skin with a clothing rub. That cheerful answering coo means comfort because Vaseline Petroleum Jelly does three important jobs. It soothes baby's chafed, irritated skin, forms a protective film that helps keep out infection when the skin is broken, helps promote healing. Use Vaseline Petroleum Jelly as generously as you please. It's pure, gentle, safe. And don't forget that grown-ups also welcome its cooling, soothing comfort when their skin is chafed or inflamed. So keep an extra tube always on hand. When you buy, remember, there are many petroleum jellies on the market, but only one bears the trademark Vaseline. That trademark, owned by the Cheesebro Manufacturing Company, is your guarantee of absolute purity. And now here is Gene Herschel. Thank you very much. I have here in my hand a message from your government. It's a message written by John Steinbeck. And this is what it says. Have you seen the eyes of a 22-year-old aircrew man with 30 missions accomplished? Eyes old with 20 years of life lived in a few weeks? Have you been aware of the scar on the mind of that young man? who kept the bombs from your town, kept you beside your radio. He kept you, in fact, the privilege of having a radio. Have you noticed the pictures of the infantry on the move? The tiredness, the feet so heavy that lifting them is agony. Those weary soldiers saved you a bed to sleep in. Now that we seem to be winning, do not forget what these men have done and are doing. If they had not bombed, we would have been bombed. If they had not invaded, we would have been invaded. You can't balance one night of assault, one bombardment, one fiery, terrible moment. You can't put a leg back on or straighten a broken back or take that look out of a soldier's eyes. But you can shorten it. Your money, your simple money, that interest too can help to force it through and get it done with. Whatever you have was saved for you by the young men and they didn't get any interest. Buy extra war bonds, more than ever before. The next week you can to present a new prize play called My Son by Milton Gibson Murray of Denver, Colorado. We invite you to listen to the Vaseline program again next Wednesday evening, same time, same station. And until then, I'll say good night. Of all good tips for cracked, chapped lips, among the best is Vaseline lip ice. Healing begins almost instantly. 25 cents at drugstores. Vaseline lip ice. Bob Anderson speaking, this is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.